understand when it comes to healing the sick we are not so much about praying for the sick we are not so much trusting the faith of the next person when we go minister everything that we minister out of it is out of the finished work of the lord jesus christ okay it comes out of isaiah 53 verse 5 that says he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed okay so jesus received stripes okay out of the stripes came blood now we know the blood is for the remission of our sins and is to buy us out of darkness into light but he had to receive stripes to have blood okay he had to be ripped open he had to be pierced to have stripes and the stripes is for our healing Okay, so in the atonement, provision has been made for, for our healing. Okay, so by his stripes, we are. Okay, so are is like a continuous present tense. But if Peter writes it years later in 1 Peter 2 verse 24, he says the following. He says, by whose stripes you were healed. In other words, so Peter looked back in retrospect and he says, we actually were healed already. 2,000 years ago, we were healed. I told the story here of Ed Baldwin that was dying with brain cancer. He was in this hospital and the doctor said, you got like 17 days over. And he decided, what am I going to do? And he decided, well, this is only 17 days left. So God will be very impressed if I read my Bible. So we started in Genesis, and the guy that was with him in the room, a Methodist guy that was very backslidden, said to him, you know, if you only have 70 days, I suggest you start at Matthew. You know, and he said, no, I'm going to start at Genesis. God will give me the time to read through the whole Bible. Now, you've got to understand the guy's whole testimony to appreciate the story. He started in Genesis, and he got in Jeremiah, and somewhere in Jeremiah he read, is there a word from the Lord for me? You know the story and uh, and and god said there is a word from the lord for you but you've got to get out of the hospital and go out to the road he said and he was so skinny he was so skinny because of the, of the cancer and because of the radiation he had no hair and this guy is just on seven foot you know six foot like 11 inches he's a very tall guy now he's very skinny so he looked very bad with his bald head and a big nose and, uh, you know, because he had a big bush of hair when we watched his testimony. So uh, he went down and he sat on the, on, on, on the sidewalk, but there were a lot of trees. And he said, God, it's past 12. There's no cars here. And he saw a car coming. And he said, well, that must be my word. And the car passed right by. He said, well, there goes my word. But he saw the brake lights of the car coming in. The car reversed. He said, nobody could see him on the sidewalk. The car stopped right in front of him, turned his window open. He said, are you Reverend Baldwin? He said, I am. How do you know? He said, I don't know. He said, I was sleeping. God woke me up and said, get in your car, drive to that hospital. There will be someone in the sidewalk. His name is Reverend Baldwin, and I've got a word from the Lord for him. He said, oh, my goodness. You know, that is what God said. Have I got a word from the Lord? You know, and he says, this is your word, Reverend. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, by his stripes you are healed. He said, oh, but I, I, I are not healed. You know, he said, he said, the revelation is 2,000 years ago. You are already healed. And the next day, uh, for those who heard the story, he went to the doctor and he said to the doctor, doctor, this is not good grammar, but this is good theology. I are healed. And the doctor said, you don't look healed. They tested him. He was full of cancer. But he said, doctor, I are healed. You know, and that night God walked into the hospital, fell on this man. He walked through the hospital, started pulling pipes and tubes and machines out of people. And that whole hospital got healed. And he walked out free and still preaching today because he got the revelation that I are healed. Okay. So Peter looks back and he said, by whose stripes you were healed. So if we minister to the sick, we've got to understand we minister out of a point that Jesus did it. It's a finished work that Jesus Christ did. If we want to minister to the sick, we must understand that we are commissioned to do it. We are commanded to do it. We are sent to do it. Okay? We're not going to trust on the other person's faith because then we are actually just motivators. We're not going out of motivation. We're going out of an understanding that Jesus Christ said, go heal the sick. Jesus Christ said, go lay hands on the sick and they shall be recovered. You know? So we're going because we are sent, we are commissioned, we are anointed to go. Okay? So today we're going to start again with Isaiah 53 maybe and uh, uh, second Peter uh, first Peter chapter 2 verse 24 by stripes we were healed by stripes we are healed but this scripture is also mentioned in Matthew chapter 8 in verse 16 is I think the the crux of the matter and what happened there Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a fever and the Bible says he came into the house of the mother-in-law of Peter and he touched her hand and the fever left her Remember? And it said, And when evening came, they brought many unto him that were sick with diverse diseases and demon-possessed. And he healed 
all the sick and cast out all the demons with a word. So Jesus healed all the sick, cast out all the demons with the word, so that it might be. Now I want you to take that tense into mind. So there we are, there we were, and there might be. So that it might be fulfilled. Okay? So that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, when he said he took our infirmities and he bore our diseases. And when God revealed this to me, this is how it happened. And this scripture just really got me. So that it might be fulfilled. So Jesus healed them so that it might be fulfilled. And God gave me this. He said, this is a lay-by situation. You don't know these words? Okay, so you go to a shop, you haven't got money. So you lay by. So this thing is going to lay on the counter and you're going to buy it later. Okay, you know lay by? Okay, you go, all the shops here in Stolfontein, it stands on the, on the shop windows. Lay by is accepted. Lay by is accepted. So you say, uh, uh, can I lay by this? And they say, well, give a 10 rand deposit. And you come and say, can I buy this? They say, no, uh, somebody lay by it. You know, so it's laying here till they come and buy it. Okay? If you don't come and buy it, they're going to take the lay away. So when you get there, it's not going to lying be there. It'll be lying there. You know? huh? yeah. So this is what God showed me. So when Jesus healed the sick, so he came to Peter's mother-in-law. This is the first instance in Matthew that we have of the story. So he touched her so that it might be fulfilled. So when he touched her and the fever started leaving her, he had to get a vision that this is laid on your account. So one of these days, Jesus, you're going to go to the cross and this fever is going to become your fever. I lay by it to your account, okay? So that it might be fulfilled. And that, and I think that's maybe why God does through me what he does through me. Because the revelations just adds to the word. And it does something that you will never forget. If you have a vision, if you have a real uh, a meeting with God, you can never forget it. So Jesus comes, you know, and he goes to the guy that is 38 years there by the pool of Bethesda. This guy is infirm. You don't know what is wrong with him. Jesus said, rise up. Take up your bed so that it might be fulfilled. So Jesus, just put this on my account. So he must be carried away to see. You see what this man has? You must pay for it so it's going to become yours. Lazarus come out of the tomb. The lepers. Okay, ten lepers come to him. And, you know, uh, if you can, you can make us all. Jesus says, go. Show yourself to the priest. Oh, it might be fulfilled. So all that leprosy must come on me. Put it on my account. Lay by it. Lay by it. Okay. Man with a withered hand. You know, Jesus, stand up. Put out your hand. Oh, my hand's going to become withered. Lay by it to my account. So everything that Jesus did was on lay by so that it might be fulfilled. That one day. So Jesus couldn't heal there because of the covenant blessings. He had to heal because it had to be fulfilled. So Jesus said, put it on my account. 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 So one of the things how we do our healing is we trust in the finished work of Christ. Maybe we must just make a few points today. We trust. Ah, <laughs> oh, we can make it. Okay. In the finished work of Christ. We trust in the finished work of Christ. Can you put the right mark in your little block? Secondly, Jesus healed because of the anointing. Okay? Luke 4, 18. Okay, like I always quote it, and that helps me to get the air prepared. In Luke 4, chapter 1, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led into the desert. Verse 14 says, and he came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, in verse 1 of Luke, is full. In verse 14... He comes back in the power. In verse 18, it says, the Spirit is now upon me. Okay? So there he was full of the Spirit. There he came in the power of the Holy Spirit. And there he had the Spirit upon him. Okay? So he says, uh, verse 18, the Bible says, he went into the synagogue and he found the place in the scroll where it is written. In Isaiah, so he quotes from or reads from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me. Okay, to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the broken hearts, recovery of sight to the blind, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so I'm anointed to do the healing. So I want to say today, our good counseling can maybe make somebody feel better. But it doesn't automatically heal people. 
Okay, counseling can soothe your mind for a while. It can make you feel good for a while, and it may, may give you hope for a while. But counseling doesn't really heal people. It just makes you feel motivated to be something, to get something, or to receive something. But counseling doesn't really heal people. And so the rest of stories of deliverance and stuff. But one anointing can do what hours and hours and hours of counseling got to do. Okay, why could one anointing heal you so quickly? Because in Acts chapter 5, 15, okay, our one that's on our prayer cloths, Acts 19, verse 11 and 12, Acts 5, 15 says, and they carried people out on beds and on stretchers with this idea that if Peter's shadow could just fall on them, they would be healed. In other words, if Peter passed by, they were just healed. Okay, come on, man. In Mark 5, the woman said, if I can just touch his garment. I mean, Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm waiting for that woman. I'm waiting for that woman. No, after he touched Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter said, Lord, the crowds are thronging you. How can you say you touched me? He said, I perceive that power. King James, virtue went out of me. And he said, and then the woman, realizing what was happening to her, fell before him. And he said, woman, you know, your faith has made you whole. Okay, so the anointing can work through shadows. It can work through cloths. Acts 19, 11, and 12, God did supernatural miracles or extraordinary miracles out of this world type of miracles. So special miracles so that the cloths and the handkerchiefs, the aprons, the handkerchiefs that were on the body of Paul, or the one translation says that Paul touched, were sent to the sick and they were healed. Okay, so the anointing is so important because Isaiah chapter, 10 verse 27 says in that day the yoke shall be destroyed not lifted not just barely taken away it shall be destroyed because of the anointing okay so we got to be anointed people of God okay we can't just go and pray and lay dead hands on dead people with a dead formula so there's got to be a breakthrough somewhere if the sick don't get healed don't keep on messing with them because they got faith after the message I'm going to get healed